Hello everyone, uh, my name is John Battle and this is my Aviation 430 Scenario 4 video. Alright, so what's the scenario? So we recently had a flight and we experienced some engine roughness. Uh, this prompted us to review some of our uh, single engine out um, procedures. Uh, there's also a local flying club who's conducting tra training on engine inoperative procedures. So for my presentation today, we're going to cover um, multi-engine V-speeds, um, factors that uh, affect and how they come up with VMC, and also the uh, identifying the factors that um, negatively affect the aircraft when we lose the critical engine. All right, so first up for V-speeds. So multi-engine aircraft have a couple additional uh, V-speeds um, that are specific to uh, losing an engine. Uh, the first one we have is VYSE, which is our best rate of climb with one engine in operative. Uh, it's 85 knots in the Duchess. Uh, we want to stay above this speed at all times to help maintain directional control, uh, as well as uh, it, it gives us our best climb performance on one engine. And that's identified right here uh, by the, on the airspeed indicator by the blue radial. Next we have VXSC, which is our best angle of climb uh, for single engine uh, inoperative. That's also 85 knots in the Duchess. And most importantly, identified right here by the red radial on the airspeed indicator is VMC. So this is a minimum controllable airspeed in which uh, directional control can be maintained with the critical engine in-op, windmilling, and the other engine producing max build power. Critical engine is really important because that's the engine whose failure would most adversely, uh, would most adversely affect the performance and handling of the aircraft. All right, so next up we have factors used to determine VMC. Uh, this was uh, made up by the FAA, uh, can be found in 14 CFR 23. Um, so the best way that I've found to remember uh, these factors are four M's, two C's, thank God on a Friday. So we have max power on a standard day, maximum gross takeoff weight, max five degree bank into the operating engine, most unfavorable CG, cowl flaps open, critical, in at, critical engine in-op and windmilling, trim set for takeoff, gear up, out of ground effect, and flap set for takeoff. Uh, you can see that cowl flaps here is negligible um, because it's, it doesn't really uh, increase or decrease much VMC or the performance. Um, same here with uh, the trim set for takeoff. It really doesn't affect VMC all that much. Uh, the most important one that I really want to talk about is the critical engine inoperative and windmilling. So if we think about losing our critical engine, our left engine, um, with a windmilling, it's going to produce a ton of drag, a ton of additional drag, which is going to make it a whole lot more difficult um, to maintain directional control. So as you can imagine, that's going to increase our VMC speed, and that's going to decrease our performance. All right, so next up, uh, continuing on talking about the critical engine, these are some of the factors that uh, we can expect, um, you know, yawing and rolling when we lose that critical engine. Uh, the best way to remember um, these factors is the PAST acronym. So we have P factor, which is for yaw, accelerated slipstream for roll, uh, spiraling strip slipstream for yaw, and then torque, uh, which produces roll. So all of these factors are more prominent when we lose the critical engine, the left engine. All right, so the first one I'm gonna talk about is P factor, um, which produces yaw and probably remember this from single engine training. Um, as the plane is flown at a higher angle of attack, that descending propeller blade is at a much higher angle of, angle of attack than the, the, uh, than the ascending uh, propeller blade. This shifts the center of thrust to the right of the propeller hub, as you can see here. The center of thrust in the left engine and the center of thrust of the right engine. And the uh, rotational force of the right engine is greater. Um, it's also the lever arms further out from the center of gravity, which makes that effect greater on the right side. Uh, you can see the lever arm here for the left engine is shorter. Um, so there's more yawing force to the left when the critical engine is lost, as you can see here by the directional force factor arrow. All right, so next up is accelerated slipstream, which causes us to roll. So the lateral center of lift produces a rolling moment around the center of gravity. So you can see the arrows here for the lift vectors um, on the left engine, and then the lift vectors on the right engine. Um, Again, going back to the lever arm, uh, the lever arm on the right engine, uh, this uh, center of lift is further away from our center of gravity, so it's going to cause a more prominent rolling moment around um, when we lose that left engine, 
which is why we have, which is why it makes left engine critical in this scenario. All right, and then we have spiraling slipstream, which produces, uh, which makes us yaw. Um, so when we think about the propeller uh, and the thrust it produces, um, it sends spiraling airflow behind the aircraft. Um, the Coriolis force actually displaces that slipstream uh, laterally. So the left engine, the slipstream actually comes in contact with the rudder and that improves controllability and stability. Um, it gives us more, uh, it gives us more controllability in our rudder pedals when we have uh, the left engine operating. Uh, the, the right engine, however, uh, the slipstream is actually angled away from the aircraft, so it provides uh, no advantage in terms of stability or, or rudder control. So when we lose that left engine, we lose that stability and, and control over the rudder, which is what makes it the critical engine. All right, and last but not least, we have torque, um, which produces roll. This is another one that we should remember from our single engine flying. Um, and it goes back to Newton's third law, which is every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Um, so when the right engine is lost, uh, the torque or the left roll uh, from the left engine is offset by the rotational force or rod or yaw to the right from losing the engine. So when we lose this critical engine, um, you can see that the, the torque is acting and rolling the plane to the left. Uh, there's also the directional force from the thrust of the right engine that's gonna force us to, that's gonna move us uh, that's going to want to yaw us to the left. So those two things combined um, are going to be a lot, are going to be more prominent than if we had lost the right engine, uh, because you can see the directional force here. If we lose the left, if we lose the right engine, the directional force of torque is going to want to roll us left. But that directional force from the thrust, um, the asymmetrical thrust, is going to want to force us and yaw us to the right. So it actually helps us out a little bit, uh, kind of cancels out that that left rolling tendency of of the torque. Um, and that was all the factors that I had. Um, and these are my sources for my presentation. Thank you for watching.